Hey guys, it's Ben with Minutes Till Minutemen here. Here to talk to you about Meshtastic, a basic overview video of what it is, how it works, use cases, pros, cons, and then I'll wrap it up in the end. Basically, this is a basic overview video for those that don't know what Meshtastic is or don't know a whole lot about it. This is by no means an in-depth video, and I'm hopefully going to do a more in-depth series on this technology because I find it pretty cool, it's pretty cheap, and uh, the uses are endless for this kind of technology. Anyways, let's get into the video. Uh, what is it? This uh, Meshtastic is open source. Uh, it, it was only recently developed. It uses... Uh, software on your phone uh, to communicate with a device like here. These are devices also called nodes. I'll use those words interchangeably. They're synonymous. Uh, they use these devices to communicate to each other and then to your phone. So uh, you'll Bluetooth to one of the devices. Then this device will communicate with another one and so on or once you reach the end device, then that will uh, communicate to the person on the other side. It is a text only uh, type of communication. There's no voice, there's no video. It's very basic, though this can be proven to be very helpful in certain situations and can honestly be simpler in, uh, in your own a cellular kind of network and we'll get more into the details of what that what that means uh, it is a mesh network so just like on the screen here it uses devices in a mesh pattern to communicate with each other uh, this is even uh, even though these are encrypted which you can encrypt your communications these will still talk with each other even if they are encrypted so basically if these two are using the same encryption key, and this one is not, just think of encryption as keys to a house. It's not, uh, it, it can be very complicated, but it doesn't need to be. So say these two are using the same encryption, this one is not. The message from here can still go through this node, which is very uh, cool because you can basically use other people's, if they allow it on their device, but you can use other people's nodes to communicate through, which is really cool because you can basically have this across a whole state, across a distance that you don't have the money or the time or the resources to put individual hopping stations, uh, repeaters, just like with uh, actual ham radio. You can use other people's network and their infrastructure to still carry your message, which is really cool. Uh, what's next? It is cheap. Like I said, these devices, the this one is a little bit more expensive because uh, honestly, it's probably better quality. This one down in this left-hand corner, uh, it's a rack wireless uh, wise block. Uh, this one is a Helltech V3. This one you could probably get under 50 bucks. This whole unit probably cost maybe 60, 70 bucks m most. Uh, this one can probably run you around 120, but that's with some additional add-on modules, which I can also get into later. Uh, it uses radio frequencies uh, to transmit very low power. Uh, this is under a watt, uh, regulated by the FCC, which is important because anything over a certain wattage cannot be encrypted. So if you're trying to hide from a superior force or trying to keep your communications just between you and your certain uh, community, tribe, mag, this is a really cool feature as well. Uh, it's very modular. They have not only different modules that you can put onto certain boards, certain companies make this possible, uh, but you can also... Um, use it for different uh, things like you can just use text over these or you can use ATAC which is Android Tactical Application Kit or Android Team Awareness Kit whichever one 
uh, floats your boat, I guess. They are self-sustaining almost um, in the cell network. You can basically create your own cell network with these devices. Uh, so if the cell towers go down, which if you remember with Hurricane Helene, uh, power went out, cell towers went down, and there was no way to communicate through those areas that were affected. Uh, so this is a way that you can possibly be more resilient in your communications. All right, we're going to go into how it works. Um, I already explained the mesh network, how these can talk to each other. Uh, these are best in higher places. The way that the radio works is it cannot, using such low power, it cannot go through hard objects or even some brush, most brush, actually. It's uh, very um, particular about what uh, the environment is. But these devices can go very far range uh, if it meets the right conditions, if it is in line of sight. Uh, that's what these uh, radios are, um, frequencies are based off of. They need to have this uh, direct uh, line of sight, as it is uh, called, but it's basically just a direct uh, way to get one frequency in a di direct direction to a different node. So that's one of the uh, cons to it, actually. But if you set these up correctly, you can have it go from, example, from your house up to a mountain peak and then down to your friend or the rest of your community. So if you set these up strategically, you can actually get really great use out of them. Uh, it, is, it uses LoRa signals. So we're going to transition here. It uses this frequency wave. This basically tells all the other LoRa mesh-tastic uh, nodes in the area that it is a LoRa signal. It's about to transmit, and it sends these waves, and then it starts sending the data. So if you look at mesh-tastic, the logo for it is this right here. So that's that's why that logo is it. This is also called a waterfall. This is just a way that you can look at a certain frequency and then see um, the history of it. So if you just look up here, it's at six, 169, 400. That's the frequency it's at. And it's uh, searching, and this is what it's found. So that's pretty cool. Um, OK, so use case. This is kind of what this channel's uh, solely about, not solely about, but being a prepared citizen, right? To be able to protect life and be smart, to be able to navigate through conflict within country, community, what have you, as uh, a sane, sober, moral, prudent uh, individual. That's what we're all about here. We're about trying to teach you guys and stuff that we've learned on the way so that you can be more informed and have these tools in your toolbox, not only physical, but also your skills too. Uh, so it can be used for pre prepared citizens. So say like a hurricane comes or a tornado or a flood or some kind of disaster. Obviously, sometimes these nodes are going to get damaged or washed away but the, the thing about these is if you have enough in the area, even if you take some of these nodes out, that they will still be able to function properly, which is really cool. Uh, this can also run ATAC, like I mentioned before. Uh, kind of sticking along this line, if you do have a foreign or domestic threat that is a um, superior force, so a greater military we, we've always known that civilians always have the uh, shorter end of the stick um, at, when it comes to defense and being able to protect themselves and others. These also have the capability to help you in that situation, not only because you're able to communicate without the opposition force uh, finding out easily, but also these, since they transmit so low uh, power, it's hard to actually direction find them 
especially if you have them in a urban environment or you have many in a uh, rural environment where the signal is coming from all around and it's hard to pinpoint where you are since all the nodes are giving off these signals. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the devices. Um, so right here I have two devices here, like I said, Heltec V3 and the Rack Wireless. Um, you can go on rockland.com and they have uh, this device right here. Honestly, this is my favorite device. Uh, because of the features it has with the different modules. This actually whole thing fits into this case that I built. It has the radio right here, so this is actually a better radio. This is the radio it comes with right here, but that uh, is actually kind of a bad radio. Uh, sorry, antenna. My bad. Antenna, antenna. Uh, this one's better, but it connects up in there. It's solar-powered. This radio can last for about two weeks, maybe more, with this setup, without it being charged. Cool thing about this one is that you can use the solar panel and refresh the battery. So when the sun comes up, it, it'll refresh these batteries when the sun goes down. So this is a node that you could... My goal for this one was so that you can put it up in a tree. That's what the loops are for, so you can tie paracord or some place that you can just leave this thing and have it be working on its own without needing to fiddle around with it. So that's kind of cool. Uh, this is another node. It drains battery way quicker. With these two batteries, it'll last about two days. So not the best, but also this board uh, does a little bit... Um, it works a little bit harder, which is um, a pro in some areas, con in others, obviously, with the batteries. Um, it has a little screen here, right there. Underneath here, I soldered in a GPS device. So the GPS antenna is right there, and here's the antenna for the LoRa signals. So you're able to also get your location with this, too. This is all without cellular or Wi-Fi, too. So you can run these things without being connected to the Internet, which is uh, really cool. Um, if you're out of power or your Internet's out or cellular is out, these devices can really come in clutch and save you, save you and your family. Um, in best-case scenario, it can relieve some headaches. In worst-case scenario, it could possibly save your life. So uh, these devices are kind of knick-knacky and fidgety, but also with the correct implementation, these things can be used um, for more um, purposeful uh, scenarios rather than just a hobby. So uh, that's with those. This one um, also has a GPS, and what's cool about these is you can put in these slots here. This is a GPS right there. So that's pretty cool on this one. On the other side, on the back side, you can put in, uh, on it right now, I have a temperature sensor and barometric pressure sensor. So those transmit those things, if you choose so, over the mesh network so you can pick it up uh, anywhere that this device can communicate with another one. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'll stop, stop uh, going on about that. Sorry, I can kind of get kind of geeky over this. Uh, all right, so we're going to get into pros and cons. So thing with these is that they're modular, uh, which is cool. Um, it's able to be built out to what you need it to be. Uh, it's customizable, kind of same thing. Um, more on the, I'm more say that on the uh, software side that it's customizable because there is a lot that you can do with encryption, a lot of it that you can control. Uh, which is great. Like S2 Underground says, if you haven't seen him, go check him out. A great uh, analyst. Um, he says that if you do not control uh, the wire, you do not control the communication. So basically, if you are just using your phone and it's in a uh, volatile time, if someone's listening in on your conversation, it can compromise your comms, which is not good. But with this system, it's a lot harder, even for people that are stronger than you, 
to be able to intercept your communication, which is uh, what we want in, we want to be more resilient in that fact um, in different kind of situations, if you know what I mean. Uh, also, it uh, uses a uh, encryption uh, key, a two, 256 bit uh, encryption key. Basically, that's one of the best kinds of encryption that uh, is out. So that's cool. And that's easy to use after setup. So basically, all you need is an app and to be able to connect to the, to the node and the app. Uh, it's just like iMessage or uh, WhatsApp. It's just very easy to use. So you can hand this off to somebody. You can have five of these laying around. You can hand a couple of them off to people that maybe aren't as prepared as you are and be able to communicate with them fairly easily when a disaster happens. Uh, cons. Um, there is a pretty big learning curve to these. You can get really geeky about it, but even with the most basic setup, it requires a good amount of research. Uh, definitely, I have found a lot of stuff out myself that a lot of people on YouTube did not go over. So that's kind of why I wanted to build the series like this, is to be able to help you guys out with everything that I experienced, all the pros and all the cons with setting this stuff up. Um, it's kind of nerdy. It is very techy, and you kind of have to be ready to learn different things about uh, radio signals and uh, programming and setting this stuff up. But honestly, I it, it's not too bad if you can spend the time, um, invest the time to learn about this stuff. Yeah, the software is kind of volatile. They're doing a lot of updates now. Um, there's a lot of software update pushes that they do. But it's still sometimes the devices will not function properly. Uh, and, you know, this is just kind of the things with open source stuff that's cheap. Uh, you can either pay a bunch of money for a pretty solid device, but you're paying thousands of thousands of dollars, like Beartooth, for instance, which is pretty much mesh-tastic with a couple other features um, for uh, big commercial or military use. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that's about it. Uh, conclusion, very modular. Um, really cool if you're able to uh, learn this stuff, that you're able to just really critique it to what you want it to be. Um, something that I've noted about this is if you're doing this with your community, you can have everyone know a basic understanding. You can teach them just basic stuff with this stuff. But you're going to need one person that is pretty expert, a pretty good expert on these devices because they're going to sometimes need critiquing and someone's going to accidentally delete one of the channels, the chat channels, and you're going to have to be able to set that up. And if we don't have access to internet, that person is going to have to know it from either notes that they took or just from memory, which um, is, is definitely possible, but you definitely need to have one person that's expert on this or else you're going to be dead in the water. Um, that's kind of the thing about all this uh, stuff that we're going to try to help you guys out with is that um, if you're doing this with a group, which I suggest you do, that's what we're trying to do here um, at Minutes Till Minutemen. Uh, if you're creating a group that everyone knows everything that everyone else does in the group, just basic surface level, but that everybody is expert in one of these fields. Um, and that's, that's kind of what we're about here, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and hopefully I'm able to bring you some more information uh, next time. So thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next video.